I greet you very cordially and God bless everyone. And greetings from distant Poland. I greet you through the media that make us feel closer to each other at least a little in these times. I greet you in a difficult time for all of us. Still, we are affected by the global coronavirus pandemic. St. Paul say that human life is a battle, a spiritual battle. And we say on various occasions, what a troubled time we live in. Or, I have some anxiety in my heart, in my life. Life itself gives us a lot of anxiety and worry. And now, everything we experience is within a pandemic. There are situations in life which we are very, very afraid of, more perhaps than the COVID-19. Maybe we are very afraid of diseases in our family, death, losing job, that children, when they grow up, will turn away from us, leave us for years, or somehow they will not manage their lives. Fear about loved ones, thoughts about losing them, paralyze us. That's why there is a saying that we repeat, anxiety can eat us up, fear can eat us up. In experiencing our fears and various anxieties, we are looking for help, for any solutions. But we can find anything that really helps. We try to cope and have very different ways of dealing with anxiety, stress and intrusive thoughts. We take supplements, CBD oil, sometimes stronger drugs. We play sports, we go shopping, take a walk, go to the beach, swim, play, sunbathe. We are habitually sitting on the phone to talk to someone about it. Either we scroll thousands of meters of Facebook or other social media, or on the contrary, we isolate ourselves. We are not able to tell anyone about it. We often eat too much, drink alcohol too much, or we do even more work and become workaholics. We try everything to get inner peace. We are also looking for various experts, coaches and therapists in life or on the internet and we expect golden advice from them for our tormented lives. Today, on the first day of our Lenten retreat, I would like to introduce to you, I would like to present to you a proven way of dealing with anxiety, stress, suffering and death. It is a proposal of an extraordinary professor, an exceptional expert in the Holy Scriptures, a man who believed and entrusted his life to God. He also met Jesus in his life. Then, when discovered him, he wrote the following words, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Or other of his words, I consider everything to be a loss, so that I may only know Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Who is it? That's St. Paul. Why we want to learn from Him how to keep peace in our hearts? Why from Him? Because from his letters we learn that he endured many different physical, emotional and spiritual sufferings. Hunger, imprisonment, shipwrecks, betrayals. He experienced different kind of suffering in his life. In the letter to the Corinthians, Paul writes about a lot of difficulties, trials which he experienced. And these are his words. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experienced in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt 
we had received the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. St. Paul was a wise and very eloquent apostle of Christ, outstanding, great and strong. But he was also an apostle of great suffering. And in all this, he always kept great peace, peace and balance. I would like to propose for our Lenten retreat that from St. Paul we will learn how to achieve peace of heart, peace in troubled times, peace in our crazy, fast and tense lives. However, to understand the peace of St. Paul and to learn from him, let's put his sufferings in order. So, through what kind of difficulties and painful experiences went St. Paul? What did he experience in terms of suffering? First, he has been personally attacked. He was insulted, slandered, he was cursed. He was criticized for being too ambitious or inconstant in his plans. Perhaps we were personally attacked. Second, he lost best friend Barnaba as a result of a dispute over John called Mark. Perhaps we too lost our best friend. We were disappointed with our close friend. Third, he had troubles in preaching. In the preaching of Christ, St. Paul experienced many problems. In this, he was in many places unwanted, humiliated, ridiculed and rejected. The preaching of the cross was the cross of his preaching. Some considered him a trickster cheater, a trickster and a cheater. Perhaps we were ridiculed and humiliated in our lives. Maybe we had difficulties, times in work. Maybe. Fourth, he had serious problems with the civil authorities. In Macedonia, Philippi, he was declared a rebel. The one who tells the people that there is some other king. Perhaps we also had some difficulties with our superiors with our authorities, bosses. Five, he had mental crisis. Especially in the beginning of his activity, he had times when he was heartbroken and convinced that the problems were beyond him and that there is no longer any hope for a better tomorrow. Maybe we've had some moments of depression in our lives as well. Maybe we experience that our problems and difficulties overwhelm us. Six, he has been physically attacked, stoned, scourged on various occasions. Perhaps we were physically attacked as well, beaten up physically, psychologically. 7. St. Paul has suffered due to lack of convenience. He has suffered from cold, nakedness, storms, hunger, thirst, robber attacks, etc. Perhaps we too have experienced or are experiencing some discomfort and inconveniences. 8. Paul has been cheated. He suffered a lot from betrayals, the intrigues of false brothers, with whom he ate, celebrated the breaking of bread. They were spying on him. They reported him. Maybe we have been betrayed. Maybe we feel or felt cheated. So we can ask, how did Paul deal with all of this? How did he deal with such great and numerous sufferings? Looking at St. Paul, we can learn how to cope 
with our life and with our difficulties today? The Apostle Paul answers these questions in his epistles. And first of all, he received peace from God. That's very important. He received peace from God. Blessed God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercy and God of all consolation, the one who comforts us in all our afflictions. He wrote that in letters to the Corinthians, the second letters to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 3 to 4. Paul is aware that real peace and comfort in any situation, in all situations, can come only from God. And secondly, Paul had learned peace of God. He learned peace of God. I have learned, he says in his letters, I have learned in whatever state I am to be content in it. I know how to be humbled and I know also how to abound. In every and in all things have I learned the secret both to be filled and to be hungry, both to abound and to be in need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. A letter to the Philippians chapter 4 verses 11 to 12. So Paul is aware of this and it is new to us that peace can be learned. We have to remember that and we learn this from Saint Paul that peace can be learned. And this is an art. That means we can learn it. We can learn peace, peace of God. This is huge art, which we will also do during this retreat. We want to know it, we want to get it, we want to learn it. So, we want to realize that real peace, peace with which we can deal with our sufferings and fears, comes only from God. And that we can learn that peace of God. In his letter, St. Paul explains what is the peace of God as he understood it. The Apostle says two things about the nature of God's peace. So what is God's peace? First of all, peace of God is the inner peace and balance in whatever situation we might find ourselves. He says, I have learned, in whatever state I am, to be content in it. I know how to be humbled and I know also how to abound. In everything and in all things have I learned the secret both to be filled and to be hungry, both to abound and to be in need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's very consoling that we can learn the peace of God. Paul doesn't say you can smile during torture, during death or hunger. No. If someone smiled at such moments, it would be just a natural trait of a person of steadfast character. That would be a talent. And with talent, one is born or not. Just like with artistic or sports talent, you either have it or you don't. Paul does not say anything like that, and he himself had nothing like that. Instead, he writes very clearly that he has learned peace. I have learned to keep track of what I have. Means it didn't come naturally to him. The kind of inner peace that he talks about also does not come naturally to any of us. Paul claims that he learned it and that kept the balance in every situation. Peace is an inner balance in any situation, in any circumstances, balance that can be learned. 
Paul further explains what peace of God is. In his opinion, God's peace is not just the absence of something, but the presence of something. It is not just a lack of fear. It is not a lack, but it is a presence of something. Or more precisely, presence of somebody. This is the feeling of being protected. It is not easy to translate it into our language. In the letter to the Philippians, we read, I quote, And the peace of God, which transcends, surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Most of the modern advisors of books and articles on the internet have that anxiety and coping with fear is usually about positive thinking or pushing away negative bad thoughts. We read in them. Don't think about this or that. Don't let these negative thoughts come to you. Control your thoughts. Get rid of negative beliefs. Or the modern way to deal with anxiety is, as I said, positive thinking. Try to be positive. It will be fine. You can do it. Don't worry. But we do feel worry. So what? The peace of God, and this is very important in the lesson of St. Paul, is not a lack of negative thoughts, but it is the presence of God himself, the God of peace. He says in his letter, the God of peace will be with you. The beginning of Christian peace is not getting rid of negative thoughts. It may be just a reluctance to admit how bad things are in our lives. Controlling negative emotions, pushing them away, replacing them with positive thoughts is nothing more than refusing to accept the facts, the facts of our lives. However, gaining peace by pushing away negative thoughts will only give me short-term peace or superficial peace. Christian peace doesn't start that way. The point is not to contradict the facts of our lives. Don't contradict the facts of your life, whatever they may be. The point is to gain living power, which will allow us to face them, to face life, to face difficulties, to face the facts of our lives. It is about gaining the power that will allow us to rise above the difficulties, above these facts of our lives, and go through them. As Psalm 23rd, chapter 4, or verse, verse 4, teaches us, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Peace of God. It's not a lack of bad thoughts. It's a presence of God. Many believers have experienced God's peace. For these people, God's peace is not positive thinking or willpower, but the feeling that whatever will happen, in the end, everything will be fine even if nothing is right at this very moment in your life. Many people achieve this kind of peace only in tragic situations, often in the valley of the shadow of death. Difficulties, strong difficulties. Within them, people learn how to have peace. Many of you or all of you were on the seashore during the storm and you have seen the waves crashing against the rocky coast. Sometimes the waves are so high that they cover coastal rocks and you might think, this is the end of this rock. But when the water recedes, the rock is still there. The rock didn't move even an inch. 
This is what a person who feels at peace is like. A peace that surpasses all understanding. No matter what fate throws against him or her, they know that they would not lose the ground under their feet. All the storms of life could not break them. And as they claim, this is not their natural talent, only their natural strength, a skill, but the skill that they can learn. Attention, each one of us can learn such peace. This is the nature of Christian peace, that it can be learned. It is an inner peace and balance, but also the awareness of God's presence in my life and a sense of His protection that surpasses almost all concepts. But there is a good question, how can we learn peace of God? How can we experience it? We can learn it through three exercises that I will propose in our Lenten retreats this year. The first is training in thinking. Second exercise is training in thanksgiving, thanksgiving to God. And the third one is training in love, is putting love, our loves in lives, in order. About that, about the first exercise, we will talk tomorrow in our next meeting. Thank you for your listening today. May God bless you and all your families and friends and see you at the next conference. Amen.